Welcome back everyone. I appreciate your patience as this guide was most in demand out of all of the EncodeGUI tutorials. Today, you will learn how to use all of the features that EncodeGUI has to offer with regards to frame interpolation and we'll also go over the ideal settings in this topic. The latest version of EncodeGUI as of making this video is version 1.0.5 which is only available to patrons until June 5th. You can find out more details on how to become a patron for EncodeGUI early access updates in the video description. The latest free version of EncodeGUI as of making this video is currently version 1.8.3. Let's go ahead and get started. If you haven't done so already, I highly suggest that you watch the introduction video of EncodeGUI and also watch the video guide to video, audio, and subtitle encoding as the content in those videos will be needed to be learned before attempting the steps in this guide. Once you have watched those videos, you'll be ready to continue further. So once you have selected a source video file, you're going to want to select a video codec and you want to configure its settings. Afterwards, head over to the VaporSynth tab under the Video tab and then select the Interpolation tab. Select the checkbox at the top to enable the frame interpolation. The default tool and graphics backend is in Code GUI AI and CUDA. This is the recommended configuration as it's a fast AI implementation and consists of the most features. The Encode GUI AI interpolation tool simply combines Rife AI with SVP Flow to allow a high quality AI interpolation while also allowing you to configure the output frame rate to any value you want regardless of the multiplier. The directions in this section are also going to apply for the CPU graphics backend of Encode GUI AI. The next setting is selecting the GPU to use. Since we're using the CUDA graphics backend, you'll want to select an NVIDIA GPU in the list. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, then you can't use the CUDA graphics backend for interpolation. Beside is the color precision, and this setting allows you to set the color accuracy. A lower color accuracy at FP16 will allow a slightly faster interpolation in code, but there will be some slight noticeable color loss. The recommended option is to leave it on FP32. Below is the option to use scene change detection, and this is always recommended to use as it prevents the frame morphing artifacts on scene changes in the video. The default scene change threshold value is set to 0.1, which should be fine for most videos. However, you can adjust this value under the Preferences and Encoding tab, and you should adjust it to 0.11 or 0.12 for videos with a lot of moving objects in the scenes, as it will help limit stuttering. But it should be noted that the higher you set the scene change threshold, the less likely the system is to detect scene changes, which could lead to more artifacting. And the last option to set is the output FPS, which can be anywhere between 1.25 times and 10 times the source frame rate. Now we'll take a look at the options for EncodeGUI AI under the Vulkan NCNN graphics backend. You'll once again want to set the GPU, and this can be any GPU that supports the Vulkan graphics API. Next, you'll want to set the number of GPU threads. Note that more threads isn't necessarily going to make the process faster. An all around good value is 2, but you may have to select one thread depending on the amount of VRAM your GPU has or if you get the following errors. The next option is selecting the model to use, and these are either slow, fast, and faster. The slow model will take more time to interpolate but has the lowest amount of artifacts than any other model. The fast model is the fastest but may contain artifacts, especially in scenes where there are patterns. Select one on the basis of your needs, and next is the TTA option, which allows a higher quality interpolation, but will make the process much slower. The scene change detection, just like before, is recommended to enable, and the threshold value can be adjusted in the preferences and encoding tabs. And finally, is to set the output FPS. The next frame interpolation implementation available in Encode GUI is Rife, and you can enable that by selecting it in the tool drop-down menu. Just like with Encode GUI AI, the same settings for the CUDA backend are also going to apply for the CPU graphics backend. First, select an NVIDIA GPU and then set the precision to your choosing. FP16 is faster but has less accurate colors and FP32 is a little bit slower but is higher quality. For Rife CUDA and CPU, the only model available is version 4.0 but more should come available in the future. Enable scene change detection by selecting the checkbox shown below and you can manually override its threshold in the preferences in the coding tabs. Lastly is to set the output FPS which is defined using a multiplier. The acceptable values are between 2 and 10. Moving on to Rife and CNN, you'll want to set the GPU to a graphics device that supports the Vulkan API and then set the number of GPU threads. An all around good value is 2 threads. Following that is to set the model. You'll want to set the model to version 1.8 for a low artifact interpolation and version 3.1 for a faster interpolation but potentially more artifacts. 
Next is to set the TTA, which allows higher quality interpolation, but will make the process much slower. Afterwards, set the state of the scene change detection, and if needed, you can adjust the scene change detection threshold value in the preferences and encoding tabs. The output FPS is locked at two times the source video frame rate. Last but not least is the SVP flow interpolation tool. This tool is not AI based, so the interpolation process will be much faster and is ideal for low end specification systems. However, it should be noted that the SPP flow interpolation tool also isn't the smoothest and consists of the most artifacts. The first option to set is whether or not you want to use the GPU for the interpolation process. If you do select the GPU to use, make sure that GPU supports the OpenCL graphics backend. Beside is the option to override the SPP flow parameters with ones of your own. The documentation for the SPP flow parameters are linked in the video description. If you choose not to override the parameters, a more simple interface is available for you to use as an alternative. The first option to set is the shader and the recommended value is going to be 13. For all of the options on this page, you'll want to consider seeing the SPP flow documentation so that you can get a better understanding of what these options mean. Below is the interpolation mode and you'll want to set this to uniform for the most smooth video. Auto would be a good option too if you like a balance between smoothness and artifacting. Next is the artifact masking and this can greatly change the amount of smoothness on the basis of the option you choose. You'll want to select off if you want the most smooth video possible, but note that there will be more artifacts in the output video. For a less smooth video but with a low amount of artifacts, you'll want to set this option to high or medium. Lastly is the output FPS which can be any value you want, including lower than the source frame rate if you want to smoothly downsample the frame rate. This concludes everything regarding the frame interpolation features and how to use them in Encode GUI. I hope you find everything in this video useful for your needs and if you need to find out more information, you can do so by visiting the Encode GUI documentation linked in the video description below. Please also consider becoming a patron for Encode GUI so that you can get early access to updates, priority support, and also a dedicated role in this channel's Discord server. Be sure to also like and subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss the next video for Encode GUI. Regardless, thank you everyone for your support and I'll see you all next time.